Hey everyone, welcome back to Ice Cream Meltdown. As promised, we're gonna be making homemade ice cream from Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams at home today. The recipe we're gonna do is the first one on the list, the roasted strawberry and buttermilk ice cream. It says a bright and pure strawberry ice cream buttermilk draws out the true flavor of fresh strawberries. So I've done the prep work ahead of time. I'm gonna do each step with you. We'll put it in the oven, the blender, the ice cream machine, and I'll pause in between so we'll get a condensed version and we'll see how this turns out. We'll see if it's as good as Jenny can make herself. I seriously doubt that'll be the case because I'm not a professional chef, but I'll do my best. And you know, if I can make this, you can make it too. All right, so step one, let's look here at our ingredients. We've got preheating the oven to 375. So we've got our oven over there. It's all, it's all heated up to 375. Now we're gonna combine the strawberries with the sugar in an eight inch square glass. So I've done the work of cut, cutting up right here a pint of fresh strawberries. Those look really tasty. So let's put them in our square glass right there. And then it says we've got two third, oh, we go down here, we've got, oh, a third cup sugar. So one pint of strawberries and a third cup sugar. So I'll put the, I'll put the link to this cookbook in the description. So if you want to make this yourself, you can go by Jenny's cookbook, but you can watch and see how it's done. So I'll put a third cup sugar in there. Let's get our sugar, third cup. Make sure we got the right proportions. Spread that around. Looks like a bit of sugar. Okay, so then we, it said stir it around so it's all evenly coated. And I did read the, the, uh, the beginning of Jenny's cookbook where she talks about the science behind all this stuff. And she said the reason that you cook and puree these strawberries is because you don't want the water in there to crystallize. So you're kind of cooking that out, you're blending it up so that everything kind of combines with the cream and buttermilk. So I've mixed that up in the dish and then it said uh, put in a glass or ceramic dish to mix well, roast for eight minutes and then let cool slightly. So we'll just pop this thing in the oven here. Go. Yeah, there we go. So we'll be back in eight minutes. Just gonna let that thing roast and then we'll throw it in our nice blender over here and get, move on to the next step. All right, it's been eight minutes. So now we're gonna take the strawberries and sugar out of the oven and then we're supposed to let it cool. So that'll just be a couple of minutes. So we open that up. Smells really good. Roasted strawberries. I don't know if you've ever had those, but you can see all those juices sizzling there. So we're just gonna put that down. I'll turn off the oven and uh, let this thing cool down. And then in just a minute, we're gonna throw that into the blender with some lemon juice for the next step. All right, the berries have been cooling for a couple of minutes. So let's put them in our blender here and uh, mix it up with some lemon juice. So hopefully I don't mess this up. Oh yeah. So put that in there. And the, the main idea here was to mix it with the sugar and get all that water out. So let's put that down. And then we get some lemon juice. And in the recipe book, it says here, uh, where's the lemon juice? Three tablespoons lemon juice. All right, so we'll put this here. Get three tablespoons of this. I'm sure that's got some chemical reason taking the acidity or something. Oops. All right, one. I'm not doing a very good job getting exact proportions here. Doing my best. Like I said, I'm not a pro. Okay, so we'll get that. And then uh, this Vitamix blender is awesome. Funny thing is, when my wife first bought this, I put the thing in like this, no, like this, which was really ridiculous. And I pushed it down so it cut into there. So that just shows what you learn from experience. So we'll put that in, blend up the strawberries, see how this tastes, do it the right way. Okay, and uh, <laughs> Oh 
Okay, so now we've got our nice, check that out, some nice strawberry puree in there. Um, so we're going to separate it. It says, next step, measure two-thirds a cup, refrigerate the rest. So let's get two-thirds of a cup here. And uh, I've got a third a cup. All right, we're just going to put it in this little container, two-thirds of a cup. That, that looks good. That's just roasted strawberries and sugar. Good stuff right there. It's probably a nice dessert on its own without anything else. Okay, and then it said to refrigerate the rest, so I'm gonna pour the rest of that. It's still warm, it was just cooling for a couple of minutes. So, all right, so we're gonna use this right now. I'm gonna refrigerate this. Uh, and now next step in the book, it says once you've got that, I'm gonna set that aside, I'll refrigerate it. it. Says for the ice cream base, mix two tablespoons of milk with cornstarch in a small bowl to make a smooth slurry. Whisk the cream, cheese, and salt in a medium. So we're gonna we've got our cornstarch right here. I put two tablespoons of milk in that bowl. Uh, and so it says with the cornstarch, we want two tablespoons plus two teaspoons. Oh, that's a teaspoon. So let me get the tablespoon. All right, I gotta dry this thing off here, just a second. Yeah, so, all right. So that one has the lemon juice in it. I don't know if I wanna mix that in the whole pack. So we'll get two tablespoons of that. Put it in there with the milk. You can come take a look at that. Put a couple tablespoons in there. Two table and apparently Jenny said in the book that she's been making these recipes using home equipment. So if we follow her instructions exactly, it should turn out just as good as hers. So we'll see. We'll find out pretty soon. So it's two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of the cornstarch. All right, and now we're going to mix that up here, right over here, until it makes a little slurry. That's just a tiny bit of milk, so there's not... It's pretty. If you've ever played with cornstarch, I know it gets kind of sticky. Thickens it up a little. All right, so this is our small bowl. All right, so we mix that up. Okay. All right, so we're moving along here. So, and then next is whisk cream cheese and salt in a medium bowl. So we've got our medium bowl. We've got some cream cheese, um, but I have to soften this. So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave and we'll see you in just a second. Okay, moving along, we're gonna, we've got the cornstarch and the milk in this little small bowl. Now we're gonna whisk the cream cheese and salt in a medium bowl until smooth. So I've got cream cheese here from the recipe. And I think this bowl is probably too big when they mean medium and small. It's not very descriptive so I don't know exactly what size but that's pretty cool. And then I needed just an eighth teaspoon of salt so not very much. Let's get that out of there. So get some of that. It's not looking very smooth but put that down. So all I'm doing is mixing up some salt and cream cheese in there but there's going to be some other stuff coming in here I think more parts of the mixture. So we'll just leave that for now. It's kind of mixed up and then it said and then fill a large bowl with ice and water and I think it's because we're going to put the, the cream and other stuff in a saucepan put that in a bag and then cool it down in here. So I've got a bowl full of ice and uh, I'm just gonna fill, fill that up with water. We're gonna use that in a minute. All right, this isn't very interesting. It's just a bowl full, filling up with water, but hey, it's part of the process. All right, so we've got our bowl full of ice and water. And then it says next step, we're going to cook. So we're going to combine the milk 
the cream cheese, sugar, and corn syrup in a four quart saucepan, and then bring to a boil over medium heat and boil for four minutes. Um, so I'll see you in a minute. I'm gonna put that stuff together. We'll put it in the saucepan and then uh, we'll be right back. All right, we're over here at the stove top and we've got our four quart saucepan. Actually, I don't know if this is exactly four quart. I just Googled what a four quart saucepan looks like and it's about that size. Um, so I think that'll work. So we've got that. We put milk in here. Um, on the recipe it says two cups whole milk. So we put the milk, um, the cream. Uh, so it says two, oh, that's cream cheese. So one and two thirds cup heavy cream. So we've got our heavy cream here. Sometimes I like to shake it up. I don't know if things settle in there, but let's put one and two thirds cup heavy cream in there. Ooh, look at that. Looks pretty good. Oh, one, oh, and then two thirds here. All right, we've got two of these, third cup. Gotta make sure we do it just right. Two thirds cup heavy cream. Okay, so we've got that, and then it says uh, milk, cream, sugar, and corn syrup. So three quarter cup sugar, and then, oh, corn syrup, two tablespoons light corn syrup. So I haven't really done much cooking with corn syrup, but supposedly Jenny said it tastes less sweet than just using normal sugar. So most of her recipes in this book have the corn syrup. I could even get this little lid off. It's not supposed to be that tricky. Anyway, let's just poke through that. Sorry, I don't like when the little thing is just hanging out right there. Get all that off. Okay, so corn syrup. We've got two tablespoons. All right, just making sure that's a tablespoon. Oh, wow, that's kind of, looks kind of cool. It's just clear liquid there. So make sure you don't buy high fructose corn syrup. That's what Jenny talks about in her book. Just make sure it's the normal light corn syrup or it'll be way too sweet. Two tablespoons and two teaspoons. Okay. So let's get a couple of teaspoons. Looks like that corn syrup's gonna keep dripping off of there. So I'm just gonna hold that, one, see if I can hold that at the same time. We got two teaspoons. We got both of these dripping in there. I don't think this is the professional technique they teach you at chef school in Paris, holding two of these like this, but hey, looks like it's working. It's just slowly dripping off of there. All right, so now I'm gonna put some sugar. I'm gonna be right back with you. I'm just gonna put some sugar in here. Um, I accidentally just put that away. I should have left it out to show you, but I'm gonna put some sugar. It says three quarter cups sugar. And then once we do that, we're gonna bring it to a rolling boil um, over medium high heat and boil for four minutes. So I'm just gonna turn this thing on here of the medium heat, medium high, and uh, we'll be back in four minutes. So we'll keep it going. Okay, so this thing is boiling. I guess this is a royal, rolling boil, as she said. It's supposed to go for four minutes. It's been a couple of minutes, but just thought it was kind of interesting looking. It's foaming up here. I've made ice cream before, but I've never made one where you cook and boil all the stuff like this. So. Um, we'll, we'll stop back in another minute and we're going to add some other ingredients and keep it going for you. Okay, I've removed the four quart saucepan from the boil. It boiled for four minutes with the milk and the cream in there. And then I'm taking this cornstarch slurry that we mixed up uh, earlier and said mix that in. So I'm going to mix that in. It's got all that cornstarch in there. And then let me get actually a little spatula. So you get a one of these rubber spatulas that you can heat up and everything. Put all that in there. And then I'm supposed to boil this again for another minute. So I'll be right back. See you in a minute. 
Okay, so I've got this cornstarch in here and you really got to stir it because I wasn't stirring it for like 30 seconds maybe and it started chunking up here but which was, I mean that's the point of the cornstarch this is going to be making it thicker but I don't know if you can see in there but there's like little pieces of the starch so you got to use a, a rubber spatula like this that doesn't melt and then make sure you keep this motion going just keep stirring it up so I think it's been about a minute in there so it says then slightly thickened looks like it's certainly thickening whoops okay and then uh, it's been about a minute so I'm going to remove that from the heat and uh, the problem is I don't know exactly what it's supposed to look like because this is the first one that I've cooked here so I hope that's what it's supposed to look like but we'll find out pretty soon I'm taking it off of the heat and we'll move on to our next step All right, we've got our milk, our cream, our cornstarch and everything in there that was heated up. It's cooled down a little bit. And if you can remember, we put that cream cheese and salt in there before. So we're gonna pour that in there. You can see some chunks with the cornstarch. I'm not too worried about that because we're gonna blend this all up in just a minute. So that should get all those chunks out of there. So we get all this mixture. It smells pretty creamy. We're gonna put I'm gonna put this down for a minute here. And then I'm supposed to mix this up with the cream cheese. It's all hot, so I'm sure that cream cheese is just melting in there right now. We're gonna put this in the blender in just a second. So it says you mix that up and then add in, the, remember the two thirds cup, we roasted the strawberries and the sugar. We're gonna add that in there. It's gonna get our delicious roasted strawberry taste and like Jenny said the key is you don't want any of that water from the strawberries in there because that's going to crystallize and you want this thing nice and smooth so look at that mixing up together if you can see that nice real strawberries and cream color starting to somewhat look like a dessert finally um, okay so I'm mixing it up here and then put in buttermilk so on the buttermilk, it's a third cup right there. So we're gonna get a third cup buttermilk. This is definitely like a more complex ice cream recipe than what I've tried before. So I'm expecting it to be extra good. The ones I've had in the past have just been like milk, cream, and sugar, like pretty basic. So we put that in there, that third cup. I'm gonna mix that up. Just take a look at the texture there and all those Nice, that looks like hmm, it's starting to smell really good actually with the strawberries and cream mixed in there. Okay, and then blend this up in our blender. So I'm gonna put this back in the blender over here. I got this from where we blended up our strawberries. So we're gonna pour this in, it's all hot now. Don't wanna mess this up. It's kinda sounding kinda chunky. I guess that's what the blender is for. Get rid of all those chunks. Make sure I got all that cream and cornstarch and everything mixed in there. All right, let's see here. So, okay, I was a little messy. Dang, it spilled a little bit, but all right. So let's, uh, let's blend this thing up here. Probably just take a I need like a towel. Hold on. Let me... I'm kind of like one of those people as I'm cooking, I like to put away stuff as I go so at the end I don't have like this huge mess project. So. got that blended up let's take a look see how it looks now there should be no more chunks in there let's see take a look well it just looks like a delicious strawberry shake actually right now it smells good it's hot I mean it's not ice cream it's hot and then next thing in Jenny's book here 
It says once you've blended this up, pour the mixture into a Ziploc freezer bag and submerge the bag in the ice bath. So remember we put the ice in the water here? So I should have just gotten like a Ziploc gallon bag, but I didn't have those. Fortunately, I had these reusable ones. So I'm hoping it all fits in here. We'll see in a second. And then once we've submerged that in the ice bath, let it stand adding more ice as necessary um, until cold for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here and then we're gonna submerge it in our ice bath. This part I'm a little nervous about because I don't wanna spill this. There's a lot of work that went into getting to this phase. So I'm pouring this in the bag. Fortunately, this blender container has a nice little funnel. Actually, it's all gonna fit in here. It said a gallon bag and I thought I would need an extra, but it looks like it's all gonna fit in this one, which is good news. So, just want to make sure I get everything out of there. It's good stuff. All right, we got pretty much all of that out of there. Just a little bit spilled. So the key is make sure this thing seals up good. Because if I get like water mixed into here, that would be a real bummer. I don't want to get water mixed in with our precious ice cream. So it looks like that's about how much it's going to make. And then it says submerge it. Oh, I've got like a big chunk of ice in there. If I submerge it in the ice bag. Just breaking that up a little bit. Whoops. All right, this ice is kind of like clumped together. See if we can get that underwater. How that's going. All right, so we're gonna put this under the ice bath. I'm gonna take a little bit of this ice out there and see if I can maybe put it on top to weigh it down. And I'm keeping the Ziploc seal up here so that I don't get any water in there accidentally. All right, cool. So I think that's pretty submerged. Looks like it. So it says about 30 minutes. So I'm just going to start a, a timer for 30 minutes. And then once that's done, we'll regroup and then I'm gonna pour the ice cream into this KitchenAid. I've got the thing in the freezer. There's this attachment you can keep. I've, I'm keeping it in the basement in my freezer. I'm gonna spin that. And then uh, once that's done, it says you pack that into a, a container with parchment on top um, and seal with an airtight lid. Freeze in the coldest part of your freezer until firm for at least four hours. But I'm still gonna try it after I spin it in there. I think you're supposed to freeze it, make sure it gets really solid. So we're gonna circle back in about 30 minutes and then we'll put it in our KitchenAid ice cream mixer. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. All right, it's been 30 minutes. I was cleaning up literally this whole time. So that was a lot of work. This thing is, I've probably been going at least an hour, tons of dishes to do. I've got our bag of the cream here I'm going to put in the machine. So it's a pretty labor intensive process making this roasted strawberry and buttermilk cream ice cream. But I'm expecting it to be really good. So I have a lot of respect for people that make these ice creams more, more than I did because this is a pretty, you know, extensive process. So we've got our bag here that's been in the ice bath for 30 minutes. And then this thing has been in the freezer in the basement for a while. It's like, it's from the KitchenAid attachment. So now all I have to do is just pour this mixture in here. So it's pretty cold already. I mean, as you can see, it's just like this cold slurry. It's getting there. It's almost ice cream. It's cold now. And this is the stuff that we were boiling I'm going to get all of that in there, make sure we get all of it. A lot of work went into this one, but I'm expecting it to be really good. I mean, it looks like it's, all the ingredients are good. I mean, there's nothing in here that's artificial or anything. Those are real roasted strawberries like you saw me cook. So I squeeze all of that into there. Ah, all right. Okay, there we go. Then we're just going to put this thing on. You can use any sort of machine. And then, uh, let's get it mixing. I think you want it on the slow setting, actually. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to mix this up. 
and then uh, we'll come back in a little while once it's cold enough to be considered ice cream. All right guys, you're technically supposed to put this in a container for at least four hours, which I am gonna do. But I'm gonna give you the review right now because it's been running in this KitchenAid mixer, which I had some issues with because it started clicking, it got thick really fast, but it's looking almost ready. So come take a look at this stuff here. So you pull out this, look at that nice thick strawberry there. It's almost finished. I mean, it's gonna get more firm than that. That's how you want it, you want to package it up. But I'm gonna take a bite here and give you a review because it's close enough where I'm gonna get the flavor and all of that. So this is it, moment of truth, guys. Mm. That is like the best homemade ice cream I have ever had. Like if I went to a some sort of boutique ice cream shop and they served me up that, I paid six bucks for a little cup of it, I would be satisfied. This stuff is amazing. Like there's no ice crystals, it's super smooth, super creamy. I'm gonna give a quick score. I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10. Just, I mean, on the money factor, there were a lot of ingredients, so I don't even know. I didn't calculate exactly how much that costs. I, I couldn't even give you a score because I still have some of the leftovers in the fridge. On the aftertaste, it's just amazing. That's probably the best part. I'm gonna give that a 10. I mean, it's, it's, you've, it's rare that I would give a, this is the first time I've given a flavor that taste. There's just a difference in there. And then the richness, it's very rich. It's like a 8.5 out of 10. And the creaminess, as you can see here, it's like totally creamy. Like on there, it's not, no air. There's the buttermilk in there. There's cream. We followed the process. We put the cornstarch. We, we cooked it. We did everything that Jenny said. And uh, the creaminess is there. I mean, that's like a nine out of 10. So of the ice creams that I've reviewed on this channel, this is probably, no, this is, I'm gonna just say, this is the best one I've had so far. And there have been a lot of good flavors. It just depends what you're into. If you're looking for something really sweet with caramel, chocolate, etc., you might want something else. But just for like a pure ice cream, good ingredients. This is Jenny's Roasted Strawberry here. Again, and I'll show you this book right here, Jenny's. Bye.